I'm here to tell you about two boys who have participated in my research program and whose screen time I've gotten to learn a little bit more about. I have changed their names for their privacy, but we'll learn a little bit about them tonight. First, I'm going to introduce you to Billy. <laughs> Billy lives in a two-parent household, and his mom is lucky enough to stay home with him and his siblings. Billy attends Boy Scouts and Adventure Camp. He plays at a nearby park. Billy does well in school, and he's well-rounded. Mom makes sure to limit his screen time, that he does his homework, he plays with his friends, and he participates in extracurricular activities. I also want to introduce you to Joey. Joey lives with his mom and his sister, and Joey is homeschooled using a virtual school system because he was unsuccessful in a traditional school program. Joey attends school on his tablet while mom works to support them. By the nature of Joey's schooling, he spends a lot of time on screens, and sometimes, even with mom working close by, he'll sneak off his schoolwork and onto other sites. So Joey and his mom will argue about screen limits. And Joey's mom is worried that his screen time may be affecting his behavioral and mental health issues. So this made me want to ask some questions. What are the differences between Billy and Joey's success? Is their screen time differences responsible for some of their success differences? Or are they just facing different doorways? And is their screen time experience comparable? Where is the view of Billy and Joey's parents' view of screen time coming from? Because their experiences are quite different, but their view seems to be the same. Screens are bad. Now, you likely heard about research showing the negative consequences of screen time. We've all heard stories about kids behaving terribly when it's time to get off screens, or parents who just feel like they've lost the screen time battle. But there are studies that don't show those same negative consequences. And as a mom, I don't think I hear about those. And I wondered, is that because they're not being shared, or is that because I'm not hearing them? <laughs> and I think it's both. I think the negative consequences of screen time is a good story to sell. But also, as a parent, we hear the negative the loudest. Because just like Joey's mom, we're worried that what we're doing is hurting our kids. So who am I? Well, <laughs> I'm a mom. I have two boys, 8 and 14. They love Minecraft and Roblox and Mario Kart and YouTube. So we have a lot of different types of screens in our house. But I'm also a co-investigator of the NIH-funded Adolescent Brain Cognitive Development, or ABCD, study at the Laureate Institute for Brain Research in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The ABCD study is following just under 12,000 kids across the country for 10 years so we can understand normal, typical brain development. The LIBOR team decided to look at the baseline data sample of 9 and 10-year-olds and see the effects of screen time on such a diverse group of kids. And I think we found something really, some really interesting results. The most interesting to me was that when we looked at kids' brains, there's differences in brain maturation associated with the different types of screen activities that the kids were doing. So for example, the prefrontal cortex, kind of the front of the brain, it's responsible for emotion regulation and impulse control. It actually develops kind of last, it's one of the later parts of the brain to develop, is actually more mature in kids who spend their screen time playing video games than kids who don't. <laughs> we also saw kids at 9 and 10 who were using their screens to be social, so they're texting, they're video chatting, they're using social media sites, actually reported less sleep problems and more physical activity than some of their peers. And then we looked at the effect on extracurricular activities. So we're talking about sports programs, art classes, music lessons, things like that, and saw, is there a relationship with the amount of time kids are spending on their screens? And once we controlled for other demographic factors, we actually did not see a significant relationship between screen time and kids' participation in extracurricular activities. That does not mean we did not find any negative consequences of screen time. We definitely saw that as kids, particularly kids who have underlying mental health issues, as the screen time increased, there was an association with an increase in behavioral problems. So we have to be aware of that. But what does this all mean? Well, <laughs> we don't really know a lot. Um, we don't know a lot in the scientific community about the causes and, of screen time on development, on the brain, on us. It is a fairly new area of research. Um, there are very few longitudinal or causation studies to be able to tell us what screens are causing these differences or if they're just kind of associated with each other. And sure, you're aware, 
the screens are changing as fast as we can study them. So it's a kind of ongoing battle. But also, screens aren't new. I'm sure all of you remember at some point in your childhood watching a screen. For me, it was Saturday morning cartoons, or remember The Simpsons, or maybe you were a game show where you watched The Price is Right, or, or Double Dare. We watch screens too, and the screen experience is definitely different for our kids. It's more portable, the interaction is very different, but watching screens is not new. So the one big question is, how much screen time is right for my child? Well, that's going to be very dependent on your child and your individual children. If your child's screen experience is a positive one, where they're happy and excited when they're on, they behave well when it's time to get off, then that's probably a good fit for that child and your family. But if their screen experience is causing them to be angry or frustrated or depressed, or if they're misbehaving or throwing fits when it's time to get off, that's something for you to look at and evaluate with that child. But if your child is finding their tribe on a video game or a YouTube channel, where maybe in school or in the community they don't have that same social connection, then that screen's probably not the worst thing that they could be doing. And what is the other option for your child? If you're like Billy's family and you have the opportunity to have your kids participate in some of the amazing programs that exist today, by all means, your child should be doing those in addition to their screen time. But if the other option for your child is going to be an unsafe community, finding trouble or drugs, then maybe those screens aren't the worst thing that they could be doing. And if your child is struggling, let's really look at what the underlying causes of those struggles are. Do they have underlying mental health issues? Are they being bullied face-to-face -face or on screens? Because while screens may be making some of those symptoms worse, they're not causing them. And solely taking away screens likely won't fix the problem. So whether you're like Billy's family, or like Joey's family, or whatever challenges are facing your family, as long as you're giving your kids the best opportunity that you can, screens aren't all that bad. Thank you. <laughs>